Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the Real Steel E77. This is Real Steel's, as far as I know, their most budget offering. Um, it's a decent knife, and we'll go ahead and you know cover all that as usual. But um, it's pretty compelling, especially for the price. So let's go ahead and jump into it. First up, some size comparisons. So we'll go ahead and bring out the ZT over 50 CF. They're somewhat similar in length clothes. This one has a, it's a little bit longer because of the uh, little tail here. And it's a decent bit wider. It's not too bad. Opening both of them up, you can see that the blade length is also very, very similar. So overall, the length of these two knives is pretty close. The ZT is going to be a little smaller, definitely a little thinner. Um, blade stock's fairly similar, honestly but the handle scales are, are definitely thinner on the ZT. Go ahead and bring out a, a smaller knife here, Spyderco Dragonfly. So again, you know, this, is, this isn't this is a huge knife. It's not super tiny though. It's a fairly middle of the road kind of thing. Bring out the Benchmade proper here, which has a little bit less blade length, uh, about a quarter of an inch, a little bit more, and a little bit shorter handle, about the same thing. This knife's gonna be a little thicker, a little wider. It's um, It comes across to me at least kind of as a, a semi-hard use uh, pocket sized folder. So, real still metamorph. I picked this up at the same time as this. The blade's just a little bit too long to stick out, but you can see the handle length is fairly similar. However, they did put about an extra quarter of an inch on the real still metamorph. It is a three and a half inch blade. So, blade length isn't uh, crazy. It's 3.25, which is okay. Um, I kind of wish they would offer a slightly smaller version of this with a three inch blade. I think that'd be fairly compelling, but yeah. All right, let's go ahead and get into what I like about the knife. First thing is the thumb studs. So you can deploy this knife with a flipper tab as I have been, or you can use the thumb studs, which are personally my favorite way to deploy it. Um, it flips very reliably, very easy to actuate that way. The detent is you know, pretty decent for the thumb studs. We'll come back to that later. But they're very nice. They're kind of stepped, so they do have, um, let's see if I can get the camera to focus here. They do have kind of a uh, step down shape. And normally I'd worry about, I would be worried about these being sharp, um, but this is a, sort of a DLC-ish coated blade and then it's stone washed. So that does knock down the texturing a little bit. So these are not sharp, they're rounded, but they do give enough texture to reliably flip the knife with the thumb studs, which is nice. Knife's completely ambidextrous. You have a four-way pocket clip, um, tip up or tip down, left or right hand carry, so that's nice. The thumb gro or the little grooves for your thumb to deploy the blade on both sides, those also work very well for um, your finger when it sits here, because it kind of, if for me at least, it fits in both of those grooves, which is wonderful. So it's completely ambidextrous. The texturing on here is really, really nice. Um, it's not too textured. It is G10, which is wonderful at this price i would expect frn or some other sort of cheap plastic but this is g10 so it's very nice it's somewhat rounded as well on the edges so it's it's not too sharp or anything like that lightly textured in, in my opinion about perfectly textured to be honest so that's very very nice there's some jimping here some larger jumps here um there's some jimping along the lock bar and towards the bottom of the liners and as well as um, on the back of the blade to kind of line up with the um, jimping on the back of the below the flipper tab. So it's got pretty good texturing. Um, all that texturing and stuff doesn't mess up the ergonomics though. There's a couple hot spots but they're mostly off of the clip and um, this kind of tail thing down here. I can't get a great grip on that tail with my pinky. I kind of wish they had either rounded it off or, you know, I don't know. I don't love that aesthetically either. It looks a little funny, but otherwise, ergonomics are great. Um, the jimping sits in the right spots. It's going to, you know, you'll feel the most here um, on your ring finger and on your thumb. So it's it's nice. It sits in my hand fairly well. Last thing I like about the knife, uh, the blade finish is actually pretty nice. I am not a big fan of DLC coated blades because they do scratch and get worn down and things like that. And you'll have marks. Well, this one, it will also mark up, but it's been stonewashed, so it's already kind of marked up. So it creates some interesting lines here along the, um, you know, the secondary grind and the swedge, which is nice. And um, 
kind of adds some visual appeal to the knife as well as you don't have to worry about beating it up too much because it is already kind of beat up for you. And at this price for this size knife, I would expect you to, you know, actually be using it unarmed neutral towards. First up, the clip. Um, it is deep carry, which is nice, but the positioning is a little low, in my opinion. I think they could have moved it up, and the screws are not recessed. So when you slip this in your pocket, it's going to go up to here, right about, and then go down again. So you have to push it down twice. It's a little annoying. It's not horrible, but it's there. The gym thing that I mentioned below the flipper tab is kind of annoying if you go to light switch this. So if you flip down, you're going to run your finger right over that every single time. A little annoying at first, you do get used to it, but it is certainly there, and I figured I'd go ahead and mention it to you guys. Fit and finish on this isn't great. It's not horrible, though. Uh, the scales mostly line up with the liners, which is nice. There are a few missed spots, but it's not horrible. Um, the, the most obvious of which is right up here, towards this kind of cut out. You can see it doesn't quite hit the liners there, but it's not too bad. For the price, it kind of falls in line with what I would expect. It's actually doing a little better than I would expect, but yeah, might just be me. The blade on this is pretty nice. It's a little thick. It's about as thick as the ZTO for 50, but the grind is, you know, fairly high, especially up here towards the uh, top of it. So that's nice, and it, it cuts fairly well. The shape's interesting, except for the recurve. I'm not a big fan of that, but it's not bad. The recurve does help it slice very, very well, but if you go to sharpen this, that's going to be a huge pain to um, have to make sure that straightens out. They did also just kind of leave it a little wide at the sharpening choil. It's not horrible, but it's 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 kind of there. So keep that in mind when you're sharpening this. That recurve is probably going to get a little bit worse over time. It's not not too bad, but it, it's there. Um, the blade slices fairly well, though, but all of that kind of is a mixed bag for me. The action on it's okay. And what I mean by that is you can deploy it easily with a push button on the flipper tab, so like that deploys, fires right out. You can deploy it very easily with a thumb stud, but if you go to light switch this knife, it often doesn't deploy. What I've found is if you want it to deploy, you've got to pull your finger down to maybe here. So you have to kind of follow all the way through, and even then it doesn't really flip very well. It's not going to be like your ZT0450 where you can light switch it and it pops out every time. It's just not going to happen. Granted, there's a massive different difference in price between these two you know about 150 dollars but it's it's kind of it's kind of eh but the push button flipping is nice the light switch just you, you really have to bring it pretty far down but you can get it to flip now if you want to only bring it down a little bit and add some wrist to it you can certainly get it to flip that way as well so it's it's kind of up to you that just bothers me that um they're going to include it and make it pointed and you have to push button it eh. But the action overall is is decent depending on how you flip it. To keep that in mind, price on this is okay as well. It's twenty six dollars. Um, I did pick this up on the Fourth of July sale for real steel, so I saved a little bit. I think I picked it up for like fifteen bucks, which isn't bad. Um, for fifteen dollars, I'd recommend this knife all day. Twenty six, uh, I don't know. I think um, if you really like the aesthetic of this knife or the materials or things like that. Um, you know, maybe check it out if you like the blade shape or the finish or, you know, anything that's going on here. 26 isn't a bad price, but I think they could be doing a little bit better and it'd be a lot more competitive at about 20. I think that would, that'd be very, very compelling. There's, so this is made by a Chinese company called Real Steel. As is this knife here, there will be a review of this one coming up soon as well. Now, with it being a Chinese company, um... The thing you're kind of giving up just a little is your warranty. So the warranty and customer service, um, if you're going to warranty this knife, you'll have to send it off to China. At that point, with shipping and everything, I would just buy a new knife. But, you know, it depends. Um, I will mention, I, haven't, I didn't have any issues ordering this or anything like that. However, someone I spoke to on Reddit did have an issue with his order on this. Um, his order was canceled. He tried to contact them and was told their customer service is only available through Facebook Messenger, which struck me as odd. Um, so keep that in mind. He, he didn't end up being able to complete the purchase of the knife. So eh. um, I just thought I would mention that. I didn't really have any bad experiences when purchasing it. 
the discount amount was incorrect. Instead of be 50%, it was $50. So um, I think that was kind of a, a crapshoot. But, you know, um, I will say that they do have a customer service contact page on their website. Check that out. So take it with a grain of salt. However, I did hear from one person that they had some issues. So just keep that in mind. And that's kind of the same thing when you're purchasing any Chinese knife. Um, you know, you're, where you're saving money is probably the warranty. Because, you know, Kershaw and um, CRKT make knives in China, but they're more expensive than this. Because they have a warranty. So we just kind of keep that keep that in the back of your head when you go to buy this. Last thing in the neutral, uh, the blade steel isn't great. It's 8CR14 MOV. So you get one extra MRV over 8CR13. Um, it seems to be doing okay. I haven't had any issues with it. It came fairly sharp. I haven't used it a ton, but I've used it for a few weeks now, and I haven't had any issues with it. It's not a super great steel, but it is a budget steel, and you're kind of getting what you pay for. So it's not too bad. On to what I dislike about this. Really only two things. First thing, um, I mentioned I like the texturing on this G10. It's, it's very, very pleasant. It's not too grippy. It's nice. However, they didn't smooth it out below the clip. So this texturing along with this clip is just enough to grind your jeans to shreds when you're trying to put it in and out of your pocket. It is not a pleasant experience to put this knife into your pocket. Uh, it's not a pleasant experience to pull it out either because that texturing. So um, if I were keeping this knife, I would probably grind that down just a little bit, just below that spot. I will say if you go to do that, be careful because G10, um, the particles can be dangerous. So do it underwater or something like that. But I would just sand that spot down just below the clip. Um, that's just me. You know, you, you, may, you may love getting your jean pockets torn up, torn up, but I'm not a big fan of that. So just keep that in mind. The detent on this knife. So, okay, I mentioned the action earlier. The action with the thumb studs, great. Action with the, you know, push button, great. I could flip it either one of these ways all day long, but the light switching on this knife, it just doesn't do it reliably. It doesn't do it. I can't stand it, and it makes me so mad because the detent is soft. And I'll show you what I mean here. Um, I'm a little close, but let me see if I can kind of swing it out. Yeah, so I didn't actuate it at the time. Um, so if you put force down, this knife will swing loose. So just keep that in mind. But that's going to be about it for this knife. Um, in conclusion, it's not bad for the price. It's not bad at all. Just keep in mind, you know, what you're kind of giving up towards what you're getting. If you like the aesthetics of this knife, I say go for it. If you're not a big fan, you can pick up some better stuff for around $30 or so. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, check out my other videos. Um, I'm going to try to be putting some more stuff out fairly soon. I'm going on vacation soon, but I'll, I'll, I'm working on getting videos to you guys for that time. But thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to check out all of my other stuff. If you're into fountain pens, other EDC stuff, I have videos of all that. And um, have a good day. Thanks, guys. Bye.